Good morning and welcome to this Thursday, October 19th, 2023 edition of Trading Places Live at EarningsBeats.com. I'm Tom Boley, Chief Market Strategist at Earnings Beats, and I'll be your host for the next 30 minutes or so as we prepare for the trading day ahead. Well, it is October 19th. I don't know if you recall, but uh, this was uh, Black Monday back in 1987. Uh, I'm not predicting Black Monday, but uh, I'm not even predicting Black Thursday. But um, just uh, thought it was interesting. It was, uh, what, 36 years ago today. So uh, pretty scary time back then. Um, it is maybe a little bit uh, coincidental, though, that we do have the volatility index, which has been uh, up threatening a pretty key area right around 20. Um, I think we fell just a little bit short of that yesterday, uh, closing around 19, although we were up near that 20 level late in the session. Um, overall, market continues to be under pressure. Uh, we've still got this choppiness. We got not a great period ahead. So uh, some things we have to deal with as uh, we move forward. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, take a look a little bit um, what happened yesterday. Got a little different uh, look today rather than going through the normal 12 charts like I do. Just wanted to go through over at Stock Charts, the uh, market overview section. And you can see here yesterday, Dow Jones Industrial Average finished down 332 points. The S&P 500 down 59. The NASDAQ down 219. You can see across the board, pretty red numbers in terms of percentages. The NASDAQ, the leader to the downside, down 1.62%. Until you get the small caps and mid caps, you can see the S&P 600, the S&P 400, both down significantly. S&P small cap uh, index down 1.88% and mid caps down more than 2%, almost 2.2%. So you can see a lot of red across the board. The only thing you see really green there is the VIX, the volatility index jumping yesterday up to 1922 at the close. That was up about 7.5%. Um, we'll take a look at that a little bit later in the show, but this is an area of the market that bothers me anytime we get volatility up around that 20 level. And 20 seems to be the level, in my experience, in my research, where when the VIX goes from 19 uh, to 21 or to 23, it's not the same as going from 13 to 15 or 17. Um, when you're really low and you take a little bit of a hit, up on the VIX, a lot of times it just uh, coincides with some rather normal selling, kind of like we've seen ABC type correction um, in a secular bull market. But anytime that volatility index breaks above 20, you want to be careful. If you go back and you look at history, when that moves from 20 to 25 or even up to 30, you can see a lot of damage, a lot of technical damage done in price action. So I don't know if we're going through 20. I just want to point out that we're there. And the market can't really take a whole lot more to the downside. Um, also, a couple of big earnings reports out last night after the bell. First of all, Tesla disappointed. Earnings came in shy of expectations. The stock was getting hit pretty hard this morning. We'll take a look at that chart in just a couple of minutes. Netflix, on the other hand, actually looked pretty bad going into earnings. And yet they came out with a blowout report. And the stock up, uh, the last time I looked, about 13%. So we talk about volatility with earnings and not really knowing exactly what happened, well, that was your poster child there last night. Because if I had had to guess, I would have said Tesla was going to have the good report and Netflix was going to have the bad report. And it couldn't have been more wrong. Went the other way. So uh, you always have to be careful with earnings. Um, looking at the sectors, I uh, wanted to go take a look here at the sectors real quick. So if you look at the action yesterday on the sectors, the energy group rising nine-tenths of 1%, consumer staples up about four-tenths of 1%. And then notice the other nine sectors all down close to nine or, or nine-tenths of 1% or more. So you had utilities and healthcare both down about nine-tenths of 1%. But you can see there were four groups here down more than 2% yesterday. Uh, real estate down 2.2%, consumer discretionary down 2.35%, industrials. And if I'm sounding a little surprised with industrials, it's because I'm a little surprised. Industrials normally, I mean, November is their best, best month, but normally we start seeing some strength on a relative basis in industrials. Not seeing that so far 
You can see the XLI down almost two and a half percent yesterday. And then the worst uh, sector materials down 2.6%. So overall, not very good action taking place um, yesterday across the board. Again, energy with crude oil prices, which have been going up. By the way, crude oil is down about 1% today, currently at about 87 and a half per barrel. Um, U.S. 10-year Treasury yield was up near 5%. Last time I looked earlier this morning, we were up at about 4.97, 4.98%. Uh, right now, 4.93%, but that's still up another three basis points from yesterday's close. Um, I think uh, Fed Chief Powell will be speaking. If you had, I'm not sure what time it is, so it may have already started, um, but he is uh, due to speak today. I'm sure that will have some impact not only on the bond market, but also on the stock market. Futures are currently up a little bit based on what I'm seeing here. I'm going to give you a quick rundown on the real-time pre-market on the diamonds, diamonds right now down are up about uh, one tenth of one percent. The uh, spider up about two tenths of one percent. The QQQ up four tenths of one percent, and the IWM is relatively flat. So seeing a little bit of positive action, but this comes on the heels of pretty big selling yesterday. So a lot of times when you're in a downtrend, and that weakness comes right back in. Um, normally, you don't see bottoms form without a new low going in. So I don't like to see market going down and then gapping up a little bit the next morning. That doesn't give me really good feeling about the sustainability of the move to the upside. Maybe we have a decent morning, but I'm not sure the selling is over just yet based on everything I'm seeing in terms of price action, in terms of the volatility index. You know, again, getting back up there around that 20 level. Um, I think we just have to be a little careful. As I've said, really since July, we're going to need to be patient. Well, I think probably the next eight days, it's going to require maybe a lot more patience. Um, next week, historically, the worst week of the year, right up there with the week we talked about in September. And we go back and look at a chart, you'll see what happened during that week in September, the 20th to the 26th, really a, another wipeout. Um, we have similar numbers coming up for next week. Now, that doesn't mean, you know, we're going to have a big sell-off, but it does mean that <clears throat> if, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> if we see the overall market struggling and we see some key support levels drop or even just rolling over underneath the 20-day moving averages kind of a thing, which is what we've seen on the IWM, the Russell 2000, that along with maybe a rise in the VIX above 20, I think you better batten down the hatches as a short-term trader and just be careful in the near term. We could easily go back and retest the recent lows that we've seen on the NASDAQ and the S&P. Possibly, I mean, if you follow the market, you know a lot of times tops are made with false breakouts. Many times bottoms are made with false breakdowns. Don't be shocked if we go a little bit below where we were just a, uh, a week or two ago. So uh, maybe a couple of weeks ago. Anyway, um, that's how I'm seeing it right now. But again, kind of two big surprises in Tesla and in uh, Netflix in terms of their earnings last night. We'll get in more earnings in just a, a couple of minutes. Let's first go over to the 10-year Treasury yield. Um, as far as earnings reports go today, or not earnings reports, we'll get into that in a minute. So um, yeah, initial jobless claims came in at 198,000. The, the market was expecting 211,000. So um, that's a number that probably is not going to go over well with the Fed. Uh, the Fed would like to see these jobless claims starting to rise, starting to show that all the rate hikes have taken an impact and or had an impact and that the uh, economy is beginning to weaken. Not really seeing that here uh, right now based on some of these economic reports. Some have slowed, some not. And so it leaves the Fed kind of like on a fence deciding whether or not to take on um, you know, the risk of continuing to raise or whether maybe just kind of tiptoe through and hope everything kind of works out um, in their favor and in the economy's favor and in inflation's favor. Um, I'm not quite sure what the Fed will do, to be honest. I, I suspect they keep talking about raising one more time. So if they're true to their word, I guess we'll see another rate hike at some point. Um, but we've had a lot of rate hikes. They probably need to pause for a little bit, see um, you know, maybe over the next few months, how things are playing out. We do know that inflation has been working its way back toward 
the 2% target, although we're not there yet. Um, so that obviously is something that traders are considering, especially bond traders. And that may, may be one of the reasons why they're bailing in bonds is because they do feel like they're still somewhat of a concern over inflation. Um, that would make sense. It also could be that it's going up because the economy um, is stronger and been resilient. And as a result, folks are fleeing. Normally what happens though, they flee the bond market, they get in the stock market. The stock market has been choppy, uh, as we know. So still a lot of question marks out there. I think we just continue to be patient here. No crazy chances on the long side. If you're somebody who likes to short, um, feel free. It's not really my cup of tea in what I believe is a secular bull market. But hey, I understand that the market's been weak for the last couple months. And uh, certainly if we fail at the moving averages, start to roll back over again, the VIX goes through 20. I wouldn't blame anyone from short for shorting. For me, I would just simply be in cash as a short to intermediate term trader. Long term, I'm still feeling pretty bullish about the market going forward. So I wouldn't do anything different than I've been doing. Um, I'd probably just be ignoring the market and doing my thing and seeing where we are down the road. That's what uh, long-term buy and holders do. They don't fret about what's going on today or next week or the next month. Um, and I don't see anything telling me that this is long-term in nature to the downside. So long-term, I would still be holding um, and just doing whatever it is I do. And intermediate term, I think you got to be careful at this stage, especially short term. Um, because if, again, if that VIX breaks out, we want to be careful. Moving on to the S&P 500. Uh, there you can see rolling over, setting a new recent low. So we had this move down, went back up, kind of holding on to the 20 day moving average for about four or five days out of six. And then yesterday rolled back over. Volume was not light yesterday. Um, and we do have option expiration coming in tomorrow. So, and that's always the cause for concern as far as volatility goes. We can have some big moves in both directions. During our max pain session back on Tuesday, really we pointed out that there was a little bit of downside uh, possible in our major indices. And um, there were some individual stocks that certainly had some possibilities that to the downside. Tesla was one of them. Um, and I believe one stock that actually had room to the upside was Netflix. So maybe some of the reaction has to do with uh, Max Payne. Couldn't tell you for sure, but it is uh, maybe a little suspicious when you look at those Max Payne levels. Um, anyway, I don't like this rolling back over, you know, moving to about a seven or eight trading day low um, as we get, you know, as we prepare for the worst week of the year historically next week. So Bears still have some things, a little bit of fuel in the tank, and there's still some things that bulls need to be concerned about as well. Um, but watch the levels that we posted or that we printed back at the beginning of October, and that on the S&P 500 was just above 4,200. We're sitting at about 4,300. We're about 100 points away, which is about 2, 2.5%. Two um, I do think it's absolutely possible. Um, I don't know if I would say probable, but certainly possible that we go back and we retest those lows and maybe even take those out intraday or maybe for a day or two before this period ends at the end of next week. So uh, definitely pay attention to that and remain on your toes if you're a short-term trader. NASDAQ 100 uh, rolling over below both of its moving averages after trading several days above both. So again, not really looking good here. Uh, morning strength, even if we get a little bit of a pop at the open, it's not going to make me feel very good still about the overall um, uh, rolling over on these charts. We'd have to do a lot more than just gap up a little bit. There would have to be a lot of buying. We'd need to move right back up above those moving averages and close there. And by the way, while you're at it, take the small cap Russell 2000 with you because that group has really, really been struggling. Um, and as I told members, watch the KRE and watch the XBI. Those are the two ETFs that track regional banks and the XBI is a widely diversified biotech ETF. And so it includes a lot of small cap, a lot of mid cap biotechs. Those two areas, banks, biotechs, represent the two largest areas in the IWM. I think they, they represent about 15% of the IWM. So until those two get going, it's going to be rough riding for the IWM, unfortunately. Speaking of the IWM, here we are. So look at all these failures at the 20-day. I don't make this stuff up. 
Look at those false breakouts above the 20. There are three of them over the course of last week to week and a half. Now we're rolling back over. We've got great support down from about 167 and a half to 170. Back at the early part of October, we got down to about 169. We may have just crept into the 168s temporarily. We could be heading back down into that range. So I definitely would keep an eye on the IWM and this upcoming support level. Transports uh, right now, rolling back over. This was maybe a feeble attempt. Um, and I say feeble because yesterday's move down three and a half percent went from a two week high, maybe, yeah, probably about a two week, maybe even actually, no, probably closer to about three or four week high. Um, that was yesterday on the false breakout. Look at that, that tail that went just above the prior high. False breakout, come back down, close below. And now yesterday, closing on the low on very heavy volume and a new closing low. So transport's not looking very good here. Looks like things are setting up for a little bit more bearish action in the week ahead. At least that's the way I'm seeing it right now. Volatility index, this is kind of the chart of the day. This is what I wanted to share with you today. Um, you can see the uh, tops coming in here. I mean, we're going all the way back to late March, early April. So the last move down, the last ABC correction we had in the S&P 500 was back during the first half uh, to two thirds of March. And uh, maybe I can only get the um, S&P on this chart for you so you can see. All right, so as we went down here in February, had that ABC correction into the middle part of March, that's where the VIX absolutely shot higher. Um, got back up to about, well, actually went over 30, it looks like intraday. Um, and usually, if you go back and you study secular bull markets, a lot of times major bottoms will be felt with the VIX up at about 30, maybe even as high as 35. Now, we're not there, and I'm not saying we're going there, um, but we are up at the 20 level, which if you go back since late March, we haven't really seen any closes above 20. Yesterday, we traded above 20 intraday. And you can see we were above 20 right before the close. And then we had a big drop um, in the VIX into the close. But don't be surprised if you see this VIX up, back up above 20, especially if the market begins to roll back over again. Um, I would just be, a, again, I'm going to be very, very cautious, not just today, but really into the next seven or eight days as we get into the end of next week. At the end of next week, at the close on Friday, it begins the most bullish period of the year historically. Let me repeat that. You know, we just went through a period from July 17th to September 26th, where if we pull up, let me go back and pull up the S&P 500. <clears throat> you can see here we were July 17th, and September 26th, here we were. So you can see it was a pretty big move down during that period. And that historically is the worst, uh, worst time of the year. Now, well, in a week, a little over a week, week from next or week from tomorrow, at the close next Friday begins the best period of the year. So if we go back and we look, let's go back a little bit. Uh, well, actually, we can see it. There's October 27th or 8th right in here. And if you look at where we were in on January 18th, we were here. January 18th, we were here. <clears throat> 62 of the last 73 years, the S&P 500 has finished January 18th higher than it began on October 27th. From that close on October 27th to the close on January 18th, that's what you're looking at. 62 of the last 73 years, it's been higher. Does that mean it's a slam dunk guarantee? Nope. We've seen it 11 times go the other way. Maybe this year's the 12th. It's possible. I'm just talking about odds. When we talk about investing, we need to talk about managing risk. One of the, one of the risk factors, in my opinion, is looking at what history tells us. History tells us we're getting ready in a little over a week to start one of the most bullish periods. So I'm just kind of looking at this as a bridge. I want to get past this next seven or eight days. And then let's see what happens 
from October 28th on. Um, if we're sitting here a month from now and we're still, still sitting at new lows, I will happily tell you that I was wrong. But I believe we're going to go down, hit one low, maybe, maybe a new low below that October low. I'm not quite sure whether we go down that far. But after that, I believe we're going to make a big rally into the fourth quarter. And I think it starts in the first half of November. We'll see. Um, let's see. We got about four more minutes to go. I did look at the uh, CBOE. I don't know if you all follow. I talk about this every once in a while. The individual half hour readings on the equity only put call ratio over at the CBOE. What we've been seeing on Wednesdays, and this is a recap of Wednesday, we've been seeing somewhere in the middle of the day, the cumulative PC ratio just skyrocket because we all of a sudden get you know, several hundred thousand equity puts right in the middle of the day when normally it's pretty quiet. I mean, you can see here from 12 to 12.30, this is central time. So it's really one to 1.30 Eastern time. But you can see during that half hour, we went from 750,000 to 833,000 puts. That's 83,000. That's kind of a normal middle of the day, not really doing much. There have been Recently, over the last couple of weeks, we have seen kind of a repeat of what we saw in October and November of 2022, where all of a sudden, out of the blue, we're seeing several hundred thousand puts being either bought or sold. We just know they're being traded. We don't know if they were being bought or sold. And I had a member write in and say, well, you know, it could be that uh, you've got institutions that are selling those, uh, those puts, meaning they think the market's going to go higher. And that's very possible but I'm gonna eliminate them either way. I don't care if they've been bought or sold. My The reason I follow the equity only put call ratio is to track what's going on at the individual retail level. I wanna know whether individual options traders are panicking or whether they're greedy, because that a lot of times marks some really key inflection points on the S&P 500 chart. And so when I see a jump of 500,000 in one, half hour, especially in the middle of the day when it's generally very, very light, um, or over the course of two or three half hour readings, there's an additional million equity puts coming in. Last year, there were articles that talked about um, hedge funds, portfolio managers, and so forth, um, trading puts on the, the big boys like the Apples and the Microsofts. Amazons, Meta, Google, Nvidia, Tesla, those stocks were being heavily uh, traded in terms of their equity puts. Again, I don't know if they were being bought or sold, but it doesn't matter. I just want to get rid of them because I don't care what the institutions are doing. I know individual investors are not buying 500 or selling 500,000 equity puts in a half hour period. It's just not happening. Uh, if you look at history, you know it just doesn't happen. It's being done by institutions. And so I just get rid of them. I don't care if they were being bought or sold. Um, and I and all it is is a guess. I don't know how you know whether they're being bought or sold unless somebody goes on CNBC and says, hey, we're buying or selling equity puts, you know, to the tune of 500,000 of them uh, in very short periods of time. Anyway, that's all speculation. I have no idea. I just know I want to get rid of it. And so I continue to keep a user-defined index at stock charts where I look to see um, what's going on strictly at that individual um, option trader level, just the retail trader. That's really what I want to see. So anyway, I wanted to point that out. Um, it is uh, 930. So um, also, I do want to point out, I'll be having the show next Tuesday, Trading Places Live, Tuesday, 9 a.m., um, but I am traveling out to stock charts on Wednesday. So I'll be in the air all day long. Um, there will be no shows. There's going to be no trading uh, room. I haven't even thought about, you know, maybe moving the trading room. Maybe we do it on Tuesday. I'm going to be out at stock charts meeting with Chip Anderson, the president, some of the folks out there. Um, so I'm not going to really be available as much as I normally would be. Um, members, you might be getting some quick market updates from John Hopkins. I don't really know what the schedule is going to be when I get out there, but I'm going to be out there uh, flying out there on Wednesday. I'll be there Thursday and Friday, and then I fly back on Saturday. So chances are we'll have a little bit of a schedule disruption 
uh, Wednesday through Friday of next week. So I just want to make sure everyone is aware of that. Um, again, there will definitely be no trading places live on Wednesday. There will be no trading room on Wednesday. Very unlikely that there will be a trading places live show on Thursday. Maybe it'll happen, but it's six o'clock in the morning out there. It's nine o'clock in the morning. I do it here. I don't know if I'll be in the studio and prepared and ready to go at 6 a.m. I'm not going to commit to that at this point. We'll see. Um, so we could see a little bit of, uh, like I said, um, disruption to the schedule next week. Uh, the following week, I'll be back and everything will be back to normal. Um, but keep that in mind. As we get closer, I'll let you know what I'm going to do or what I'm not going to do and whether or not we're, we're going to reschedule that trading room. We may just wait until the following week. Um, if the market is, some of it might depend on the market. If the market looks weak and we're rolling over and we're in the worst week of the year historically, and I'm looking from a long standpoint, maybe it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to have it next Wednesday anyway. But anyway, that's, uh, I just wanted to make sure everyone had the heads up there. Um, let's take a look and see how we are opening this morning. Uh, we've got right now the Dow up 19, S&P up 10, NASDAQ up 54, uh, small caps, mid caps, both down a little bit here. The VIX down slightly. Um, NASDAQ 100 up 79. That's up a little over half 1%. Let's take a look quickly at uh, Tesla and see how Tesla is opening. I'll just pull up a five-day, 10-minute chart. You can see it opened down at 226, but it is back to 230. Still down 5% for the day, though. Netflix, on the other hand, big gap up over $400. It's still up 14%, even though it is now down $14 from the high earlier, just a couple of minutes ago. So big gap up, reversal to the downside, and Tesla on the other side, gapping down, reversal to the upside. Remember, when you get these gap downs, like on Netflix, get a big gap up like this, everybody's buying, market makers are selling. So a lot of times you get that reversal because it's in market makers' interest to drive that price back down. In this case with Tesla, it's the other way. Every, everybody's selling. They miss their earnings, get the big gap down, and then market makers are on the long side. They're providing liquidity on the long side, and you can see the rebound. Whether or not it lasts, I don't know. But at least temporarily, we're seeing a bounce here into the first few minutes of the day. All right, uh, that's it for me. So uh, that's all the shows for this week. Again, I will be back on Tuesday to do Trading Places Live. And at that point, I'll have a lot more information for you on my schedule Wednesday through the balance of uh, next week. Anyhow, have a great day, everybody. Be careful out there. Watch the VIX, especially if this market rolls back over, puts in some new recent lows. Keep a close eye on that VIX. Anything back up into the 20s could spell short-term trouble for equities. Have a great day, everybody. Happy trading.